Well, that was really something, wasn't it? Uh, chrom chromatography is such a, a quiet activity that we thought we would do chemistry with a real bang to, uh, to uh, just sort of get things going a little bit. Uh, today we're going to talk about the separation of substances using chromatography. Uh, chromatography is a technique that's used by many different kinds of laboratories, uh, uh, clinical labs and hospitals or environmental testing labs. Uh, forensics labs all use chromatography as a way to separate different kinds of compounds uh, with the goal of identifying the presence of, of useful sorts of things. Uh, a forensics person might, might identify toxins or, um, or whatever in different kinds of contexts. Uh, we'll do chromatography in this lab, a special kind of chromatography called thin layer chromatography or TLC. And that we use a TLC sheet very thin, paper-thin piece of material like this for our experiments. You'll have one of these on your bench in front of you, along with uh, some, um, along with a, a beaker uh, of this size, and you should have a ruler like this, some some plastic wrap, uh, and you should have some capillaries as well. Nearby in the hood will be uh, some developing solution. This. And there will be some, some standard samples. These are, um, are, are dyes. You'll have four dyes available to you, probably in the hood of your lab. And in addition, each person will have his, own, his or her own mixture of dyes, which are constituted an unknown. You'll try to identify what these, what these dyes are by comparison with the known dyes. TLC uses a a sheet like this that has a thin film of cellulose applied to a plastic backing. The shiny side is a plastic backing, and you can touch the plastic backing. But the dull side has the cellulose on it, and you may not touch that. The cellulose scrapes off altogether too easily, so you have to be very careful when using this. Uh, just touch it by the edges like I'm doing here. Don't touch the surface of the plastic. Because the plastic uh, because the cellulose rush, ru uh, rubs off of the plastic easily, and because you have to use a pencil to mark it, you have to mark it very gently so as not to hurt the cellulose. Now, your first step will be to mark uh, a line across the bottom of the cellulose exactly one and a half centimeters from the bottom. So use your ruler, make a little mark at one and a half centimeters on one side, and then a mark one and a half centimeters on the opposite side and then place the ruler lightly, very, very lightly, lining up those two marks, and without pressing down on your pencil, make a line across the cellulose like that. You can see the line when you do that, and the line is not so hard that you scrape the cellulose off. You have to be very careful of that. Now make marks about starting starting at a half a centimeter from one edge along that line you've drawn. Little marks across there. Uh, first at a half a centimeter in, and then at one centimeter increments across the bottom. You should have five marks when you do that. The line and the, and the marks across them are called the origin, and the positions, those are the positions where you're going to put your dye samples. When you check into lab, uh, you will be given an, an unknown sample of dye containing a mixture of the known kinds of dyes, and you will be given a capillary tube. When you have your, your, your TLC sheet ready to go, you will take it up to the hood and, and take one of the capillaries in one of the dye samples and uh, and spot the dye that is in the capillary on the marks you made at the origin on your TLC sheet. Just a small mark is all that's needed to do. The capillaries hold plenty of dye for that. I want to do the, the next dye sample. And then the third dye sample. and then the fourth dye sample. These are all known samples of dyes. 
Uh, each dye is different from the others. You want to be sure that you put the capillary back into the correct dye container when you're finished so that you're, you're, you're certain that you have not contaminated your dye samples. Now finally, you want to go back to your bench and take the, the unknown dye sample and the capillary, put the capillary into the dye sample, allow the dye, to, the dye mixture to flow into the capillary, and spot it in the fifth position, like that. Now all five samples have been spotted. Might be a good idea to air dry them briefly, like this. Now we're prepared to run the chromatogram. We run the chromatogram by putting it into a beaker with a small amount of developing solution in the beaker. Uh, this uh, this um, pipetter um, enables us to transmit to transfer a particular volume of, of material to uh, to a beaker, and we operate it by grabbing a hold of the white top of this, putting the beaker underneath it, pulling the white top up until it stops, and then pushing it down until it stops. Now the right volume has been dispensed. Uh, it's preset to the correct volume, 10 milliliters in this case. Set it down. Place the chromatogram into the beaker, like that, and put a piece of plastic wrap on top of it to keep, it, to keep the liquid from evaporating. And don't jiggle it for the next uh, about 15 minutes. And while, uh, while this is setting for 15 minutes, the, uh, the developing solution rises slowly. And as it rises, it carries the dye with it. Um, you'll be able to see that happening. At least at first, it moves fast enough that you can see the dyes moving. Uh, as, it, as, the, uh, as the developer moves up and up and up, uh, the rate at which the dyes move slows a little bit. But in about 15 minutes, uh, the, the developing solution will have, will have traveled up almost to the top of the chromatogram. Keep a close eye on the uh, chromatogram, and when it has reached within about a half a centimeter of the top of the chromatogram, when the developing solvent has reached about a half a centimeter from the top, then you want to very carefully remove the plastic off the top and take it out of the solution. And when you do that, you'll be able to see that, the, the, that there is a, a line of dampness that is the boundary between the wet chromatogram and the dry chromatogram where the, where the developing solution hasn't run yet. Right away, you want to use your pencil to mark that, that, that boundary. Now you can let it dry, and it takes about five minutes. Wave it in the breeze a little bit for about five minutes. It's good aerobic exercise for you. And then when it is fully dried, you can make your observations now, there are several observations you want to make about this TLC. Um, you can see that there are different colored dyes. You want to write down on your report sheet the colors of the dyes in each position that you see. I, I see here yellows and oranges and greens, all kinds of colors. Write down those colors on the report sheets. Uh, you also see that the dyes have different shapes associated with them. Um, and write those down. I, I see round shapes and so on, different kinds of shapes. So write down those shapes as you see them. In addition, you want to make measurements on this. You want to measure how far the dyes have moved relative to how far the developing solution moved. Uh, the distance the developing solution moved is called the solvent front. And you can measure the solvent front position using your ruler, the distance from the origin line to the solvent front line, measured in centimeters, uh, can be reported on your, on your report sheet. Uh, at the top of the page, it says the distance the developer moved. And you write that distance down. Uh, be sure to write that down, estimated to the nearest hundredths of a centimeter. With your pencil, you should mark each one of the dies so that you can measure how far it goes. So just uh, mark a, a circle, perhaps, around the dies on the sheets, and then measure the distance from the origin to the portion of the die that ran the furthest. We call that the, uh, the die front, the 
part that's, that's the fastest running portion, measure that distance, again measuring to the nearest hundredths of a centimeter, and report that under the column where it says distance moved for each one of the samples. Finally, you're going to want to evaluate the, the, the fraction of that distance, that the, uh, the total distance that the, uh, that the die moved. It's called the RF. The RF is defined as the ratio of the distance that the die moved divided by the distance that the solvent, the developing solution, moved. So that would be uh, uh, the, 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 so the, the sample front divided by the solvent front is the RF and you record that RF value in the final column on your report sheet. When you're finished with recording your data, you can use the information from the standard samples, the known dye samples, to identify the components of your unknown sample using the shape, the characteristic shape, the characteristic colors, and the RF values of the colored spots in your unknown samples. They should correlate, correlate well with, this, with the known samples, so you can identify what they are. You should also answer the questions at the bottom of the report sheet and clean up your mess and then you can leave. <laughs>